Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I've had a little bit of a weird day today. Story time. I had a nightmare last night and I dream quite vividly anyway. Like my dreams can be really, really wild. But I have noticed this is the second time that this has happened in recent months. You know how when you get a little bit older, you start to have weird reactions to food? Well, I can no longer eat salty snacks before bedtime because I have nightmares. And I feel like salty snacks are a weird one for it to be, but that is definitely my thing. Anything salty, a couple of hours before bed, I'm gonna have really wild, vivid nightmares. So my nightmare last night wow okay it doesn't even sound scary it sounds really really bizarre so i can't remember how it started but i was having like this shootout with these conjoined twins <laughs> why am i explaining this to you this dream was a big meld of all of the media and things that i've consumed recently so these conjoined twins are trying to kill me and i'm trying to kill them but i've been watching heroes so these twins can't die so the only way to kill them is to stab them in the head i can't even make excuses for my brain guys but I get rid of these two twins they're not trying to kill me anymore because they're dead and i for some reason decide to post about that on twitter there's an old friend in this dream as well somebody i haven't spoken to in like seven years who of all of the friends i had between between the ages of 18 and 21 that I'm not still friends with, there's only two that I would actually still talk to now and it was one of those. They were in my dream and I was staying at this hotel that was also a bookshop downstairs and it was like really quiet, family run, really cute. So this friend's here staying in this hotel with me, Curtis is also there, my best friend Ryan's also there and there's this whole twin thing going on. So I decide to post about it on Twitter and say that I've murdered these conjoined twins and then I go to bed and wake up and think actually maybe it's not a good idea to admit that you murdered somebody on Twitter. So I delete the tweet but then everybody's like insanely paranoid after this that they're gonna come and arrest me but not arrest me because in my dream it's this kind of like really harsh government and i know that the government is just terrible and i did murder someone to be fair so maybe it's justified but essentially i'm a wanted criminal and we have an emperor for some reason and that's really really scary so i'm convinced that i'm gonna get caught i'm going stir crazy in this hotel okay so i have to go outside so i go outside with my friend that i was spoken to for ages and while we're outside the emperor is having a televised parade so yeah yeah, Becca, what a great time to go outside when the emperor is rolling down the street. And he has a couple of animals behind him being pulled on like sleds. Think that this kind of weird emperor stuff is all like Sanderson related. So then the emperor's pig gets out of its sled and starts snuffling towards me and it's televised so the camera's are like oh what's this pig doing and then i'm on tv and then the people who are hunting me are gonna find me so i head back upstairs in the hotel and i'm just really sad because i'm the person who killed these twins even though they were trying to kill me so like it was self-defense and all of my friends are going to die horrible bloody deaths because of it and not only that the sweet people who own the hotel and work in the bookshop downstairs so i I'm just sat there so tense that I'm gonna get caught and it's kind of just a waiting game because like I was on TV so we're pretty sure that they're gonna find me but are they gonna find me and we're just all sat there in silence waiting and nobody blames me even though I'm the idiot that went downstairs and outside when there was a televised parade going on and I forced myself to wake up because the sitting just waiting to be murdered was a little bit too much for me so I woke up and I was feeling nostalgic because I haven't spoken to this friend in like six years and also terrified because of the tension of the nightmare this was 6 a.m so i just sit and scroll through my phone for a bit and then at 7 a.m i decided to get up now because i'd eaten the salty snacks this is a really weird story time and really long i'm so sorry but because i'd eaten the salty snacks i struggled to get to sleep even though i only had like four hours sleep on saturday night and woke up really early on sunday so i had like a really kind of restless sleep before i fell asleep and then i woke up at Six, got out of bed at seven and it is now 4 30 p.m so that was my story time but this morning when i got out of bed it was freezing i made some coffee i read for a couple of hours then i worked out for the first time in ages can't lie guys just not been doing that so i did a 30 minute workout made some candles read some more had some lunch imported my vlog footage had a shower just finished editing my vlog and waiting for it to export now and it's now 4 30 i usually finish work at six and i'm all done the main reason that this day has been kind of 
of weird as well is because I ran out of printer ink and I noticed yesterday. I have ordered some from Amazon, but it's only arriving tomorrow, so I can't pack any orders until tomorrow. So I've done the things that I would be doing tomorrow today, which means that tomorrow is just a full day of packing orders. So after all of that, which lasted forever, I'll tell you what I'm reading. So true to what I said multiple times throughout last week's vlog, I'm not going to tell you about this because I am predicting a book in this series is going to be in almost every single vlog from now until the end of the year because I'm currently reading Words of Radiance Part 2 by Brendan Sanderson. I'm 136 pages into this. I've read about 90 pages so far today and just the fact that it took me over a week to read like 200 pages in probably both of the installments of Way of Kings and I'm currently already 140 pages into this kind of just shows how into it I am now and also how much more compelling it is. It's kind of weird because I kept saying about Way of Kings that Brandon Sanderson's writing was a little bit different and he wasn't really explaining anything but as soon as you get in this it kind of goes back to normal Sanderson. There's this thing in the series called Spren and they kind of hover around things the different types of Spren so pain Spren hover around people in pain and the characters in this series don't realize that the world isn't normal or is a little bit strange so they don't really question anything too much there's only a couple of characters who are particularly inquisitive so Spren is just something that they accept and you're reading from their perspective so you never get to find out what they are and then pretty much first chapter in here this is what Spren are and I was just like finally some answers I really like Kaladin a lot more now I still love Dalinar it's not that I didn't like Kaladin before it's just that his perspective was kind of monotonous but we did get this really slow build that is going to be really pivotal to his character like it's already showing in his character and I'm assuming the plot as well but just wasn't super enjoyable to read from. Interestingly enough, in Way of Kings, my favourite perspective to read from was Shallon. And now that I've started this, I sigh every time I have a Shallon chapter, even though like something really big's just happened in one of them, because I really just want to read from Dalinar and Kaladin. But I'm really, really excited to read this. I'm having a great time and I'm definitely going to get to page 165 today because that is the end of part one where the first interlude starts but ideally I would actually like to also read the interludes and get past the page 200 mark which the way I'm feeling right now with how much I want to read this is totally doable but haven't had a whole ton of sleep so when I actually sit down and read who knows how much I'm actually going to be able to concentrate on this. I am participating in the Slayer Fest as well. This is the second full week of Slayer Fest and this is the fourth book. I think that I will be reading for the readathon. It's interesting as well because the prompt that I have this in for is location number four, which is the mansion. And it says, Drusilla, Spike, and Angelus are attempting to wake a Kathla and destroy the world. You know you'll have to stop him by making some hard choices. Read the next book in a series you have been delayed in continuing or start a new series. So when I originally put this in my TBR, I was, I think I just finished the first half of Way of Kings and it is a very slow start to this series. So I was kind of thinking like if I was not co-hosting a read-along for this series I would 100% not choose to pick up Words of Radiance in October. I would have left it until at least November to give myself a little bit of a break in between books. So that was my kind of reasoning for picking Words of Radiance but the irony of it is is that the end of Way of Kings was so compelling that I could have gone straight into Words of Radiance after that and because I've actually had such a short break and only read a manga and a 300 page book in between the end of Way of Kings and the start of words of radiance my momentum is like super there and I'm super interested in it so I did kind of bend the prompt just slightly and put it in as this is a book that I would have delayed reading if I didn't have to read it and also I could have done with a little bit of a break or I thought that by the time I got to the end of Way of Kings I would have preferred to take a break as opposed to picking this up and then ironically turns out this book is another book that I'm most excited to read on my TBR the speed that I'm reading this at because I started this yesterday afternoon and did a whole ton of stuff yesterday as well. Read 45 pages. It's currently 4 30 p.m. I'm on page 136. The speed that I'm reading this at, I'm really sad that I have another six books. Do I have five or six books? Yeah, I have five books on my October Copley TBR that I need to read in between this and part two and I'm really upset about it. And while we are also talking about my October Copley TBR, this is on there as well to read an adult fan see I did only put the first half on because it means that my Bookopoly TBRs are a little bit easier to complete. This is still hefty though. I was shocked when I found out how big this was. I thought it was only about 500 pages but it is 
650-ish. So yeah, she a chunky one, but I'm currently flying through it. Checking in real briefly today because this arrived for me this morning. This is from Waterstones and I believe it is a pre-order of a book I've been excited about for months. <laughs> so let's have a look. It's really pretty. Today is Polo Pox by Jessica Townsend's book birthday. I pre-ordered this ages ago in the Waterstones edition. It's the hardback and the UK hardback. So it has absolutely beautiful naked hardback stuff going on. And we also have orange sprayed edges on here as well. Is this the Waterstones exclusive edition? Yeah, it's a signed exclusive edition actually. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it says, I don't know if you guys can see that. It says burn brightly and it's signed by Jessica Townsend. Fun fact, Jessica Townsend bought two sets of Nevermore candles from me not too long ago, which was a little bit of a surprise, but she is just a lovely lady and I love her books. So if you guys don't know what Holopox is, this is the third book in the Morrigan Crow series, the Nevermore series. This one is The Hunt for Morrigan Crow. It's a middle grade series and it is about a young girl called Morrigan Crow who is considered to be the cursed child in the town where she lives. So every year when children turn a certain age in this town, there is a bidding day where influential members of the community can bid on children to take on as apprentices. And Morrigan goes into this expecting not to receive any bids because she's a cursed child and she's destined to die before her 12th or 13th birthday. I can't remember which one it is, but she does actually receive several bids, one of which is from the wonderful Jupiter North who whisks her away to Nevermore and enters her into a series of trials to become a member of the Wondrous Society. So I really, really love this middle grade series. It is magical. It doesn't feel like a children's story. Like it doesn't talk down to you or anything. It's just a really imaginative, wonderful world that is just, honestly, my favorite thing about this series is that Jessica Townsend has created a world that seems real without being overly explanatory. It's just the way that she writes it is completely plausible and Nevermore feels like a place that you could actually go to. So I'm really excited to read this. I will be saving this for Believeathon. My plan for Believeathon is to read at least one book per week, but I will definitely 100% be reading Hollow Pox because like I said, I love this series. So that was my book mail for the day. I haven't really vlogged much this week. I've done a little bit of B-roll, but I'm still reading Words of Radiance part one. The way it feels, it feels like I'm flying through this book because it is six 650 pages and I'm currently on page 390 still. <laughs> 
loving this so much. Like I said, it feels like I'm flying. I'm having a great time when I'm reading this. I'm still reading around 100 pages a day, which isn't a lot in terms of what I can read because 100 pages a day is like standard for me. But with adult epic fantasy, things do tend to be a little bit slower. There's a lot of text on the page, things like that. So for me to be reading at least 100 pages a day of this really is flying through it. And I aim to finish this. How much do I have left? I have 260 pages left. So it's only like 3.30 p.m. today. So I anticipate that I could finish this by late tomorrow evening, but we'll see how I go. I'm really gonna have to restrain myself from just picking up part two of this. I am participating in Slayer Fest and I have to read the books in a certain order. And part two of Words of Radiance is last on my list, which is good, because aside from this, it is the biggest book on my TBR. It's around 500 and something pages, that one. And it's not actually on my Bacopoly TBR. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this month we're not going to have a punishment. There's a lot going on in my TBR this month, but I think everything's going to work out fine. Hey guys, so we are on 7.02 p.m. on Saturday evening, and honestly, I have no idea where today has gone. I got up not late, I did lie in a little bit, but I've been up for a decent amount of time now, and I feel like the time has just flown by. I released the Christmas candle range yesterday, and most of it is gone. There is still a little bit left, which may still be there by the time this vlog goes up. I'm not 100% sure, but I released that, and when that sells out, I think I'm gonna have to close for a couple of weeks. I've also extended my dispatch dates to two to four weeks, because I've fallen behind yet again, but I've been working today because I need every day. I need every moment I can. I usually kind of work to a weekly routine kind of thing and at the minute I just have to work what is best. So I made 115 candles yesterday. Did not intend to make that many. 115 was not enough. So I ordered some more jars. I ran out of jars because that is 115 as a full box of jars. So I've ordered some of those. I think they'll arrive on Tuesday. So what I need to do now is make sure that Tuesday and ideally Wednesday as well are completely clear so I can make another 115 candles on Tuesday and ship 115 candles on Wednesday. But usually on Tuesday, I'm doing things like editing my vlog. On Wednesday, I usually film and and that is my filming day for the week. So yeah, I've kind of shoved everything up. So today I've edited my video for tomorrow and also all of this vlog up today. And I'm just trying to make it so that Tuesday and Wednesday are as empty as possible. Aside from that, I've been doing some reading. But before I get onto what I've been reading today, I should probably let you guys know that I actually did finish Words of Radiance Part 1 by Brenda Sanderson last night. So I gave this five stars. I continue to love it all the way to the end. Interestingly, my thoughts on the perspectives and which perspective I was enjoying the most stayed the same until the end. The further we got into it, the more and more chapters from Shallon's perspective we have, and I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's flipped so suddenly between Way of Kings and Words of Radiance, but I am just not that interested in what Shallon is doing anymore. I'm much more interested in Dalinar and Kaladin. We also have the perspective of Adolin in here. This chapter is from his perspective. He is Dalinar's son. And then we also have, I think we've only had one or two chapters, but we have also had Sadius's perspective in here, who is one of the other high princes of the Alethi. And then we've also had a variety of new perspectives in the interludes, one of which is very interesting. Plot-wise, things have really started to ramp up in this one. We kind of know what some people's intentions are, although I have no doubt that Brandon Sanderson is still going to surprise me and it'll turn out that I haven't actually figured out what's going on. It's really hard for me to review this just because it is so substantial. I could do a full like 30 minute video on this and not even cover everything. And with it being the second book in a series as well, it's hard for me to kind of talk about what's going on without spoilers. But I definitely found this one more compelling than Way of Kings. I'm definitely more attached to the characters now. I obviously understand that that is because of all of the groundwork that was laid in Way of Kings, but it's in this book that I've actually started to care about them a little bit more, and I'm just really interested in where this story is going. Brandon Sanderson is a master of misdirection. The thing with Brandon Sanderson is that every reveal that he has, as soon as it's revealed, you can go back and see every single moment where he laid the groundwork for this. Like, he pretty much slaps you in the face and tells you what's going on, but he is a master of misdirection because he will then have something else happening in the same scene where he is revealing things without overtly revealing them, if that makes sense. We will have something else going on that draws the reader's attention to that instead. So you'll think that was a bit weird or that was interesting, but he's already moving on and taking you somewhere else. So you're not focusing on these things. And I just think it's excellent. 
I really love his writing and I cannot wait to move on to part two of this. So for my Bookopoly TBR this was on there to read an adult fantasy and for Slayer Fest this book was for location number four. The prompt for that was to read the next book in a series that you've delayed continuing or the first book in a series. While we're talking about Slayer Fest I am now up to location number five which is Sunnydale High. The master has been defeated, ye Cordelia, and you are looking forward to a calm senior year but that is not to be. The new Slayer Faith has teamed up with the Wicked Mayor and now you have to stop them or no one will live to see graduation. Challenge, read a book with a school as the main setting can be high school, boarding school, college, etc. So for that prompt I'm going to be reading the only other book I'm reading this month that is not on my Bookopoly TBR and that is Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This one is the Lumicrate edition. So I received an arc for this on NetGalley. This book was released at the end of September. I didn't quite get to read it in time. I was approved like midway through September for it but thank you so much to the guys at NetGalley for sending me an e-arc of this. That has obviously already been released now and I've received it in my Lumicrate but I am still going to read and review it as soon as possible or no because I did get an arc of it. So this is the first book in Naomi Novik's new series that's set in a magic school. I have already started this. I'm on page 64 so far. So what I can tell you about this so far is that it is set in a school that is called the Scholomance which is set in the UK. It's really weird actually because I'm pretty sure Naomi Novik is American but this is very English. Like there's just ways of things and phrasing and stuff. So the Scholomance is this really weird school. I don't really want to get into the magic system in this explanation because it's really haphazard and the way the story's told I don't really understand a whole lot of it at this point, only 60 pages in. But the Scholomance is a school where children go to who are magically gifted. There are no teachers there. This school is pretty much riddled with demons and essentially you go through this school for however many years and the school moves while you're in it. So your dorm is always your dorm and you start off on the top floor and the school rotates you each term down to the bottom and when you graduate you have to fight your way out of a room of monsters. Now I don't really know because of the way this story is told like the whole deal with the outside world or where all these monsters have come from but pretty much if you do not attend this school you have a 1 in 20 chance of surviving. However if you do attend the school you have a 1 in 4 chance. I don't like the writing style in this and as soon as I found out I think Ashley read it she was here when she started reading it. And the writing style is really conversational and I just don't like it all that much. It's proving quite hard for me to focus on it because of the conversational nature of the writing. Just conversational writing in general is not my favourite. But I am kind of interested in what's going on. I like the main character so far. She's very sarcastic and she doesn't have a lot of friends. She is on the verge of being like a dark sorceress just because of the type of magic she wields. Like people have different affinities for different things and there's different types of performing magic. So you you can draw mana which is the most normal way of doing it by calling on mana reserves or you can do something else which pretty much drains people's life force. So the way her magic works and the inclination that she has she's more likely to drain life forces but she chooses not to and goes like the mana route instead but pretty much she's just fighting to survive because the majority of students who go to this school die anyway. I don't know what the overall plot of this is so far but it starts off where she's really mad because this boy keeps saving her life and she's really annoyed at him for it and he thinks that she's going to turn into a dark sorcerer so he pretty much starts following her around and hanging out with her all the time and because he's this big hero guy that means that people want to talk to her because they want to get to him and she's just really annoyed and wants him to leave her alone. So yeah I can't really say to what extent I'm enjoying it so far. I mean I don't mind reading it. I'm not having a terrible time reading it but I'm not a huge fan of the writing style. There has been quite a lot of discussion recently about the racial representation in here and how it contains a quite a few microaggressions in it. I can't really speak for any of that representation. So where it is present, it's not something that I would necessarily pick up on. So I will leave a couple of own voices reviews down in the description box if you guys would like to check that out before you go into this book. What I will say is that the main character is biracial. She is white and South Asian like I am. The representation of that so far has been fine due to my personal experiences at least. But what I will say about this is that most of the discussion that I've seen apart from one particular 
particular incident in this book that centers around a character with locks have been to do with how the representation is lazy in here. So we have diversity and people of different races and nationalities in here, but there's nothing kind of to back it up. So like you'll have a character who is Chinese, but won't talk about Chinese heritage, like her being Chinese does not play any part in the story. It's not well grounded. It's not well thought out. She's just a Chinese written character with like a Chinese name and that is the extent of the diversity in here. Just thought that I would let you guys know about that. As I mentioned I'm 62 pages in so I still have quite a ways to go. This book is 320 pages long. However it is still only 7pm. When I finish this vlog update I am going to edit this clip so everything in the vlog is edited up to date and then I'm going to I think play some video games and do some reading because Curtis has just gone to his dad's to watch football. So I'm all alone for a couple of hours and I'm definitely going to be making use of that time. So it's not even midnight yet. It's 11.30 p.m. but I'm going to bed because I had a little bit of a late night last night. I got a decent amount of sleep still, slept in again today. I spent most of the day packing orders with all the stuff I had to do because I had to prepare and label the candles first. I did only manage to dispatch 13, I think, but I have a pile of 25 over there that I'm doing first thing in the morning. So I have hardly read today. I'm on page 154 of Deadly Education by Naomi Novi. I think I've read about 20 pages so really not a lot at all and I've literally just read them. I was gonna stay up until at least midnight and read some more but I have a slight headache coming on and I would rather go get ready for bed and try to get enough sleep so that I wake up early naturally tomorrow than sit and read when I'm not really in the mood to. So yeah I'm ending the vlog here. I'm on page 155 of this. I cannot say right now. I can't even really hazard a guess at what my final rating on this is going to be. It could be anywhere between between two and four stars, I want to say. I really like the main character of Elle. I really like her attitude. She has a pretty bad one, but I really like it. She's sarcastic and defensive, but she also, like, in her inner monologue, we get some, like, of her weaknesses and some of her worries, and I really, really like her. I also like the character of Orion, who's the hero guy that she's annoyed keeps saving her. My issue with it, one, I don't like the writing style. Two, it has endless exposition in it. Like I've just read, I think I was around page 245 and there were three pages of exposition. It's just a lot and because there's so much of it and it's happening so frequently, I feel like I'm not even retaining the points that are made in the exposition because it's just too much. It's like information overload every few pages and I'll read the exposition and then I'll forget what the main character was even doing to start off with and yeah. It's just, it's taking me a while to read it. I read 135 pages yesterday. I was really getting into it. I'm torn between struggling to read it and really enjoying it so my rating my final rating when I do get to the end literally could be anything right now so I'm sad that I'm not going to finish that tonight but I've had a really weird day today I don't think I've left the house all week. I think I've been out once because I needed to get cat food for Hamilton. So I'm at the point now where I need to go out at some point just because I'm getting a little bit stir crazy. I haven't even been for a walk or anything. So by the time we got to today, which is my seventh day of working this week and not even just working a little bit, like properly working, I just don't feel great. I'm a little bit fed up. I'm a little bit tired and I'm excited for next weekend because fingers crossed, even if I do have to work next weekend it's not going to be as intensive as this weekend that's fingers crossed because I don't know I could encounter all kinds of setbacks next week and not be able to get to the position that I want to be in so that is it for this week's vlog it has been a little bit of an uneventful one but I do hope you've enjoyed it if you've made it this far if you have don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I will see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no